so something tells me if you're wanting to watch this video, you're wanting to learn how to stream with two computers and not have a capture card. Your previous Twitch streams probably went a little something like this. Leave an F in the comments below for that poor monitor. Now, NDI actually stands for Network Device Interface, and it's nothing more than a plugin that you can download and just put into OBS Studio. Now, all NDI does is it's basically just shipping off raw data from your gaming computer to the second computer, then it just lets the second computer do the encoding and shipping everything off to Twitch. That way, your gaming computer doesn't actually have the extra work that it would have to do from either encoding with the CPU or encoding with the GPU. Now, before I go over how to install it on both of the computers, you're going to want to check and make sure that these two computers are actually plugged in through Gigabit Ethernet, not Wi-Fi. If you're running Wi-Fi, you will have issues. Check and make sure everything on the LAN side for you is Gigabit, because if it's not, you're going to have a bad time. All right, now let's actually go over just how to actually install it onto the gaming computer and onto the streaming computer. First, you'll need to open up Google.com. And you can type in OBS and DI, click on the very first thing that pops up. You can click download. Now there's a lot of information here, but all you really need to care about is the runtime. So let's download that. Then we also just need to download the installer. It'll be good to know, depending on what operating system you're running, you may need to choose something like Mac over Windows. Once that's actually been downloaded, let's go ahead. We can run the runtime and sell our soul as usual because that's what you do for free software. Install, install, install. Finish. Now we can go ahead and click that. Let's just run the installer. Okay, I accept. Just take my soul. Download something. Now, once this is actually downloaded, we will need go through and restart the computer finish boom let's restart the computer all right now for the settings of the gaming computer let's click tools and di output settings put a check mark next to there and then type in what you want the gaming computer to be called but take note of this because you will be looking for the gaming computer on the streaming computer now let's go to settings go to output you can choose the encoder that you want x264 uses your cpu you can also use ones that uh, your video card can provide, such as NV Inc. and whatever AMD provides. The rate control, keep that at CVR. You can probably set your bitrate anywhere from like 7,000 to 10,000, probably higher if you really want to. The good thing to note with this is that you're not being limited by your actual internet with this computer. You're pretty much just sending everything over your local area network. So just tweak that, do whatever you want with it. Now the CPU usage preset, if you set it too slow, it will actually give you a pretty big performance hit. So you're going to need to mess around with this. But technically, the slower, the better the quality. So that's just something you'll need to tweak. For audio, obviously select your headphones, select your microphone. For video, the base canvas resolution is the resolution of your monitor. And the output scaled resolution would be if you have a 1080p monitor, but you want this scaled to 720p. Now, I highly suggest actually scaling it to 720p, just due to the fact a lot of people on Twitch, they watch on their phone, and you can get more lag out of a 1080p stream than you would a 720p stream, and there's not that much of a difference between 1080p and 720p on a phone anyway. So the downscale filter and the FPS, basically the higher the better for the downscale filter, That, but it may give you a little bit more of a performance hit, so you may need to tweak that. And then the FPS, you could really just select whatever you want on that. Now let's go ahead and let's move on to the streaming computer. All right, now let's go over how to actually set up the streaming computer. It'll be good to know whenever you're actually messing around in the settings for this. You need to know what your upload speed is due to the fact this computer is actually shipping off the data to Twitch. And it relies on your upload speed, unlike your gaming computer that had a lot more bandwidth due to the fact that it was sending the data over your local area network so all you need to do is click plus right here you can go to ndi source name it what you want click ok source name look for what you named your computer click on that you can do hardware acceleration if you'd like click ok now wait a moment it'll pop up there you go now you're actually seeing what i have on my computer 
pretty nice, right? So what we need to do now is just mess with the settings. So a lot of this can just be the same as what you put on the gaming computer um, for your stream. Obviously, you want to either log in to Twitch or you want to do your stream key. Got put as usual. Set your encoder, what you want your bitrate is. Remember, bitrate is going to actually be tied to your upload speed. If you put a higher bitrate than what your speed is, your stream is going to just be very, very bad. It's going to buffer constantly. Make sure you set the preset that you want. For audio, I don't have anything plugged into my streaming computer. All of my mics and stuff are just plugged into my gaming computer. So I don't have anything set up. For video, you want to make sure that your base canvas resolution is actually what you set your gaming PC's output scaled resolution to. That way there's just a little less tweaking. It's a little bit easier to mess with. Uh, you can set the downscale filter to whatever you'd like. Now this is going to be another thing that may impact the performance. So you may have to put that down to like 16 or even just billionaire if you have to. Um, try and set the FPS to whatever you actually set on the actual gaming computer itself because if you put 30 fps on your gaming computer and then 60 on this there's not really going to be that much of a difference on the data that's actually being sent from your gaming computer to this uh maybe if for some reason you had a 60 fps camera plugged into your streaming computer then maybe it would work but it just makes more sense to try and have those identical all righty so now let's go over just some of the things that you may actually run into if you have some issues with this so just as a heads up, you may run into a black screen on the streaming computer, and if that's the case, you're going to need to disable the firewall on either one of the computers. I would suggest disabling it on the gaming PC first and see if that fixes it. If so, you'll want to put an exception somewhere in the firewall for it. And obviously, if it doesn't work on the gaming PC, you'll want to try and do that on the streaming PC. So I've had someone ask me about audio before, because it's not too obvious with NDI. But more or less all it is, is it's just going to capture any kind of audio that's on your gaming computer and it's going to ship it to the streaming computer and then it'll send that off to Twitch. Now it's also good to remember that you can actually plug in a webcam, you can plug in a microphone, you can plug in whatever you want into that streaming computer. It doesn't have to only be plugged into your gaming PC now because the entire point of this is to try and make your gaming PC only deal with gaming. All right, that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. If you have any issues, anything like that, leave a comment down below and we'll be able to help. Don't forget, we have a Facebook group that you can also join. We'll probably be able to answer back there pretty quickly.